Republicans are in a fierce battle to maintain control of the Senate, where they are defending a whopping 24 seats on Tuesday, compared to just 10 for Democrats. And new polls out this week show the race tightening in some key states. In Wisconsin, incumbent Republican Senator Ron Johnson appears to be closing the gap with Democrat Russ Feingold, whose lead is now less than three points in the latest Real Clear Politics average, down from almost seven last week. But in Pennsylvania, it's the Democrat who is gaining, with Katie McGinty overtaking incumbent Republican Senator Pat Toomey. She now leads in the real clear politics average by almost three points. That race was tied just one week ago. So a couple of weeks ago, Dan, the Republican Senate looked like it was lost. Uh, now there's people that I know, pollsters, people saying they could sneak through with a majority with 51. Yeah. What's, what's happened? Well, the Senate is going to be Tuesday night's undercard, and it is going to be exciting. It's going to be so much fun to watch it because, look, the almighty polls had been flipping from one end to the other in a lot of these races. And some weeks, Kelly Ayotte is down by four. A week later, she's up over Maggie but what Hassan accounts for, by four. What accounts for Ayotte's uh, uh, rally? It, well, I think because Ayotte has been uh, running a pretty strong campaign. Most of these Republicans have found their feet. Pat Toomey uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, maybe not so much uh, 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 Richard Burr in uh, North, North Carolina. Carolina. He's been having problems. But uh, most of these races, I think, have tightened because people are beginning to figure out or decide, do they want, if Hillary Clinton looks like she's winning, do they want divided government? Do they want to give control of the Senate to Republicans? Here's what's happened in Wisconsin. Ron Johnson uh, threw, a, threw out his, his Beltway advisors and consultants, got some local oh, Wisconsin people. He, say, he started running excellent ads that reminded people who he is, a manufacturer, an outsider, not somebody who's part of the problem. And Russ Feingold, others have been reminding them that he was a three-term senator. Yes. Uh, and uh, he's got nothing. Bring, he's bringing nothing new to the table. Yeah. So that has reshaped that race. Yeah. What about Toomey, though? Because Toomey has been doing well in adjacent in the in the Philadelphia suburbs, mm -hmm. where you got to do well if you're Republican. Right. Not so well in the western part of the state. Well, Toomey, that, that race is always going to be a squeaker. I mean, it was a squeaker for Toomey to get in. It's just a very closely divided state. But Toomey's a quality candidate. I, I have not um, ruled him out yet. And I think he's typical of the candidates that are up this cycle in the Senate, whether you're talking about Michael Rubio, Ron Johnson, Pat Toomey. These are strong candidates. And I think the, the left and the Democrats overplayed their hand a little bit with the Trump card, just going out there and saying, we're going to link every Republican candidate to Donald Trump and drag them down. It hasn't worked as planned. Todd Young in Indiana mm -hmm. also uh, sneaking ahead of Evan Bayh, the former senator and former governor. Right. Uh, they pro the Democrats bet that he could come in, big pile of money, famous name, but he also has a record that Republicans have exploited. Yeah, I think they were hoping voters had forgotten about the Obamacare votes. Uh, you look at premium increases everywhere, people have not forgotten. And it seems like a bad time to run as sort of Mr. Washington insider, which is really uh, who Evan Bayh is. But again, versus a couple of months ago, tough map. You talk about the real clear average. Uh, if every senator uh, ahead uh, wins, in that average, Republicans end up with 52 seats. So this is definitely much better than where they thought they were going to be a while ago. We're going to see as it closes here. I, I like uh, Ron Johnson closing hard in Wisconsin. Richard Burr, he's made some mistakes in North Carolina, but his, uh, his opponent, ACLU lobbyist, probably too far left for the state. She ended up uh, having to say that she lobbied against a sex offender registry, but actually she was for Here's the problem with Burr, though. He took that race for granted. He didn't go after. He thought he had an easy opponent, and he hasn't really rehabilitated his own energy. He's been attacking her on the same points you're making, but he hasn't shown people, okay, vote for me. Yeah. That's one way Ray, Roy Blunt in That's Missouri has actually yeah. rehabilitated himself yeah. in some ways with some positive ads. You haven't seen that in, in North Carolina. He's in trouble, though. He He's been painted as an insider. He and yeah. his family lobbyists, and it's it's working for his opponent. There. Kim, how do you see it? What are your sources telling you about this uh, Senate campaign? Any surprises you expect? Well, there is a lot of worry about Missouri in particular and Roy Blunt, and that could be one of the surprises of the night. The Republicans are doing much better than they were a week ago. Uh, people are feeling a lot more confident, but you could end up having one of these topsy-turvy moments where a guy like Roy Blunt loses because in this case, he's also up against a very dynamic, younger generation, millennial 
a former veteran who defies a lot of the stereotypes of Democratic candidates, and that is going to be a tough race. And uh, what about Florida, Kim? Do you think uh, Marco Rubio is going to pull it out? He was uh, leading for quite a while, pretty comfortably, and then it got close, and then the, 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 they came in with a bunch of ads against Patrick Murphy, the congressman. Yeah, I mean, Patrick Murphy, not a great candidate. Marco Rubio was leading. Look, I think Rubio has uh, sort of been hurt a little bit by Hillary Clinton's massive investment in Florida and her organizational ground game, which has bled off and helped Murphy some. Now that the Republicans are putting their eye back on the ball, he seems to be getting his footing again. Came out of a couple of really good debates, too, where he ran circles around his competitor. Ups upset pick, Dan? Ron Johnson in Wisconsin. Richard Byrne, North Carolina. To me, wins Pennsylvania. Uh, Kim, well, who's your upset pick? Uh, Joe Heck out in Nevada. Okay, and I'm going with uh, Ron Johnson. All right, in Wisconsin.